A quick reminder, just as a heads up, basically off of PlayStation 5, some people were get able to access some stuff about the final shape and echoes and basically a lot of the stuff that will be revealed come this Tuesday with the final shape's launch. There will be a bunch of spoilers going on, uh, uh, The just to be certain, the annoying people who post spoilers to YouTube and social media and don't think about the people who don't want things spoiled, they just want the views. So if you want to avoid that, I just recommend steering clear of most social media or at least keeping a careful eye in, so you don't get variety of story beats for the final shape and that goes spoiled. Moving on to the twid itself, of course, you might have seen recently, the Dungeons & Dragons collab with Destiny 2. I'm not going to play the little video, of course it is lots of fun showing it, but we could get a good look right here. It looks like in terms of D&D characters, we do have Mind Flayer Warlock, possibly Dragon Titan, as well as something for hunters that I can't exactly tell, but they do have two little tentacles that hang over their cloak, and definitely looks cooler than Warlocks if I'm honest. But there is also something nifty and that the I, uh, the beholder look for the ghost shell that is going to be there will actually be available to buy for yourself if you want to keep a hold of it. But then the big thing that we got is the artifact preview, which I'm going to go from left to right as basics as always, but you're probably going to read a few of them, so just keep in mind when we get there. In column one, we first have anti-barrier pulse rifle, which means anti-barrier outbreak perfected, which always sounds great. Unstoppable Sidearms, which is a little bit more tolerable just because you only need to shoot once, so you just need to have a utility sidearm regardless. However, there is also Unstoppable Scout, which is just generally good because you can keep at range and still have something decent for damage other than, you know, a sidearm. And then we also have Overload Hand Cannon, which is a little bit of a rough option in comparison to the overloads. I do need, you know, have to hit something a few times to load the overload shot, but you know, overcharge hand cannons is always great. And then anti-barrier submachine gun, which in perspective is a little bit rough because you do have to be off kind of close. And most SMGs that I can think of, at least in the higher tier content, won't take a, a single, will take more than one magazine to actually break the shields. But there is of course always radiant and various options. It's just better than sidearm though, if I'm honest. And getting into the column two, which is some of the perks that we'll start to get. And then moving forward, we have Logic Reductor with weapons with the Radiolaria Transposer Origin Perk deal increased damage to Vex. Extends the duration of Radiolaria pools created by Radiolaria Transposer, which is self-explanatory. It's going to be a buff against Vex foes, as well as a buff to an Origin Perk, which is self-explanatory, is going to be making pools of Vex Radiolaria at enemy defeated feats, which is interesting considering what the next season might be, so possibly Vex season? The meals to have Overcharge Armory, Weapons with the Dealer's Choice, Radial Area Transponder, Collective Purpose, and Sundering Origin Traits are always overcharged for you when that modifier is active. Which, forgetting what Collective Purpose goes for, I think that's also something last season that might be Riven's second option, but this is the Warlord's Ruin perk that is going to be seasonal in Dealer's Choice. I imagine it is going to be the Pale Heart Destination location, so it will be some old, mostly new weapons permanently overcharged. Then we also have the Authorized Mod for Elemental Charge. The costs of Elemental Charge mods are significantly discounted, which I forget exactly what that means, but discharge, discounted mods, it's always great. Saints Inspiration. Rounds loaded by the Cast No Shadows Origin perk can overflow the magazine. Interesting. Which, that might be raid or dungeon or something else entirely, considering we already have so many. Winning Hand. While using the weapons with the Dealer's Choice Origin trait, combatants precision final blows or rapidly defeated combatants cause the targets to explode, dealing solar damage to nearby enemies. Basically, Memento Mori and Firefly. Having several equipped weapons with dealer's choice, origin trait increases the effects of the explosion. Moving on to the third column, which is when perks start to get nifty. Threaded Blast. Destroying a tangle with a strand weapon creates a larger and more damaging explosion. Interesting. Pass the advantage, or press the advantage. Breaking a combatant's shield grants increased weapon stability, handling, reload speed. Swords gain increased guard resistance. It's always weird that they have to input a sword bonus because anything that isn't damage almost seems pointless. Creeping Chills. Stasis weapons final blows against slowed or frozen targets release a burst that slows on defeat. Interesting. 
And then we also have Overload Sword, which is risky, risky. Landing consecutive hits with a sword you are wielding disrupts combatants, stunning them, delaying ability regen, and lowering output. Strong against Overload Champions, additionally, swords are always overcharged. If there was Energy Accelerant on the field, I imagine this would be nifty, but we don't. You also have Elemental Siphon, where rapid final blows with a kinetic weapon or a weapon type matching your equipped super create an elemental pickup that matches your equipped super. So that is actually going to sound very nifty considering how useful that elemental pickups will be, especially with Frost Armor. We have Counter Energy in the next column. When you or a member of your fire team stuns a champion, you gain ability energy for your least charged ability. That sounds nifty. And we also have Blade Stamina, rapidly defeating combatants with a sword, refund some ammo. I'm hearing a sword theme going on. And we also have Void he Hegemony? Hegemony? I'm not sure how that said, but Void that. While you have a Void or Prismatic subclass equipped, defeating weakened targets provides a small Void Overshield. Interesting. Then we have Radiant Orbs. While you have a Solar or Prismatic subclass equipped, picking up an Orb of Power makes you Radiant. Well then... Galvanic Armor, when you have an Arc or Prismatic subclass equipped, incoming damage from combatants is reduced while amplified. Honestly, I know it was to be expected, but this just says use Prismatic because you can have so many perks just because of using Prismatic. Then going to the top of column 5. I did a little bit of reading beforehand, not many of these actually sounded game-breaking. Prismatic Transfer, when you cast your super, each member of your fire team with a super type different than yours gains a bonus to damage of their weapons which could be nifty just because of prismatic it's really easy to have a variety of different supers but it is just a damage buff we also have argent blade which is basically argent ordnance but for swords when you have armor charge dealing damage with the sword consumes charge and empowers your sword for a small time giving it bonus damage and charge rate and expanding abyss void sources deal increased damage to weakened targets which this isn't weakened grenades it's basically just a void buff to weakened targets which means you do have to apply a weekend beforehand still, so eh. Then you have Shield Crush, which actually sounds very nifty. While you have Woven Mail, Frost Armor, or a Void Overshield, your melee recharges faster, and that deals increased damage. While you are, however, Amplified or Radiant, your grenade recharges faster and also has a damage buff. Possibly running one of these at the same time is possible. I imagine it would be kind of easy to get Amplified and have Frost Armor in some respects. So having a buff to your abilities period is going to sound nice and you also have transference lastly gain increased grenade and melee damage while transcendent weapon final blows while transcendent refund light and dark energy after transcendence ends that does sound popular or at least it's going to be be popular however most of these don't sound too game breaking although again actually thinking about it if prismatic is properly game breaking a lot of these won't be needed to make it game breaking in succession then we also have some Raid Race details, as always. Basically, it will be launching June 7th, which differently is going to be the same week of launch. Contest mode will be enabled for 48 hours after reset and launch. You'll need to be at least 1965 power level to be at the cap through all encounters. The entry requirements being that you need to complete the Final Shape campaign in the Wild Card Exotic Quest as needed to enter the raid, but only the fire team leader must have this. A fair warning, though, any members of the fire team who do not complete the Final Shape campaign before jumping into the raid will be spoiled as it does contain spoilers the completion criteria we have changed the way we will track and recognize world's first completion of the raid fire teams will no longer be required to return to orbit to finish the race the first fire team to finish every encounter and loot the final chest will be declared world's first to have their victory immortalized with salvation's eggs world's first raid belt Similar to Crotozen, we'll be working, with, uh, working to quickly check with analytics before we announce the winning team, and our social channels will then start our more thorough security review. We don't want to make everyone wait around while we dig around this data, but if we do find any cheating or violation has occurred, we reserve the right to disqualify a team. Hope they're basically saying Salt Grepos just quit, because I feel like he's cheating, honestly. However, there is, of course, the world's first on Twitch Rivals. If you wish to keep up, you can actually be rewarded earning any of these various shaders for various, you know, requirements for just watching stuff. There will be Twitch drops for a few emotes as well, just badges on the Destiny 2 Twitter. Then the Pantheon poster that they talked about before, it is available on display if you actually want access to it in real life and put it on your wall. So if you want to go for that, go for that. Then the Pantheon Creator Challenge, Sweats Go 1. Moving on. There is an update to Fireteam Finder Voice Chat. Making coordination with your Fireteam is easier. With the launch of the final shape, they're adding a new voice chat to channel for Fireteam Finder lobbies. Players will be able to use voice chat to coordinate their plans and discuss options before launching into the activity and lobbying up. 
Fireteam Finder players can press left arrow, D-pad, left to cycle through the Fireteam Finder voice chat as they please. We also have the Cosplay Cosmodrome, which if you didn't know, this is basically people being told to cosplay their Destiny stuff and make some cool posters and looks about it. These folks recreated that cutscene with Cade and Crow. And then there is the Bungie Rewards final moments. There is some stuff that will expire at the end of the year that is mostly from the variety of just general, what's it called, rewards throughout the year. If you earned it from seasons, you know what I'm understanding. If you earned it throughout the year, check the Bungie Rewards thing to make sure that they don't expire by end of season because there's a good chance that some stuff will. Just keep an eye on it if you wanted to actually buy anything. Then something that I mentioned in an individual PSA, basically that Destiny 2 will be taken offline Monday around reset usual time. Basically meaning if you have anything you need to get done, do it before they take Destiny 2 offline. Otherwise, you will not be able to touch it until final shape and probably lose out on it if it's seasonal. There will be preloads available for every variety of launcher and gaming platform. Xbox, Steam, Epic Games, Microsoft Store, all of these varieties of things have their own way to check their own information for, you know, times. They should be relatively the same, but there might be some difference. Speaking of which, if you're looking to install the game itself or wanted to install basically the updated version of Destiny 2, there is also some minors or er, some details here if you want to keep track of a variety of things. Steam is getting chunky. Uh, but aside from that, there is, of course, some... Um, Disclaimers, Destiny 2 install size may vary based on language packs. PlayStation 4 included current installed versions of Destiny 2 and everything, as well as Steam, everything all together. Then there are PC operating system requirements. Beginning on June 4th, Destiny 2 is ending support for Windows 7, 8, and 8.1 OSs. Be sure to keep track of this if you need any stuff with that. Final Shape Day 1 Known Issue List. Basically, while we are finalizing our list of certain information and issues that we are investigating, that we want players to be aware prior to launch of the Final Shape. We expect this list to be published before the update goes live on the Tuesday, but stay tuned to Bungie News for more information. Then, Claim Seasonal Rewards. Season of the Wish and Into the Light end on June 3rd. Make sure to claim anything expiring before they're gone, including Seasonal Seals and Rewards. Actually, claim them. If you earn them, you have to claim them to actually keep them. Season Pass Items, Season Vendor Rewards, Shack Zavala, Drifter, and Saint-14 Rewards, Banshee Reputation, as well as the Bungie Rewards themselves. Basically, most of these vendors will be disappearing, some of these vendors will be resetting their seasonal stock, so you'll probably lose any built-up engrams if you don't use them. Then the Vault Updates, as usual, the Destiny Content Vault will be expanding a little bit, mostly seasonal content that is, again, accessed across many a seasons and a very long season of the wish so if it's something specifically seasonal that isn't like the exotic mission itself that you already have unlocked more so unlocking the exotic mission i would recommend that people can actually get it all done before the season of course ends and it all goes into the vault then some known issues last wish weapon rewards from the pantheon can drop as their old version of the weapons some Iron Banner Legacy ornaments are missing unlocked descriptions. A selection of reprised weapons have incorrect lore tabs when inspected. Chest opens with salvage keys and season of the deep activities will not drop the expected daily red border weapons. Full list of emergent issues in Destiny 2. Check the known issues article and report anything to the help forum. Then we also have movies and art of the week as always, but that is the end of this week in Destiny. Now, honest question, why talk about something with Pantheon having an issue if Pantheon will be ending in, you know, five days? But aside from that, that is This Week in Destiny. It's mostly, again, all going to be news heading into the final shape about the details regarding the final shape. We probably won't be getting anything else re regarding sandbox, exotics, or anything else. So just keep that in mind. And of course, keep an eye out for spoilers if you are browsing stuff on social media just to make sure it is not spoiled for you. With that, my name is The Mad Scorpion. I will see you in the next video.